Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Joni and I am the blogger behind SimpleLivingMama.com and today's video is going to be a homeschooling video and we are going to be doing um, a review of the Good and the Beautiful's science units. So I'll sort of talk about how long we've been using their science units. Um, I started at the beginning of last year, I think, with a safety unit and I did a whole, I think I did two videos on that um, where I showed how I set up the safety unit as well as um, a full review and also showing off our science board in which I used a trifold board for that. Since then, we have completed the arthropod unit. Um, we have started on the um, sexual reproduction unit. It, we haven't quite finished it yet. I kind of paused it. Um, I'm trying to go through it individually with my two oldest children. So I'll come back to that one um, probably in the next year or so. And we have done the introduction to energy unit and then the energy, heat, light, and sound unit and the marine biology unit. And I think that's everything. We are currently working on water in our world. And then our last unit of this school year will be the meteorology unit. So, we've done quite a few of um, these units now, so I feel like I can sort of give my review um, and talk about how I set everything up. I've tried a few different methods, as well as give you some ideas for the science wall, because the science wall is a um, pretty fun thing, and it's something that's a little bit unique, I think, to the Good and the Beautiful, um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do your science wall. So I'll get to that in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just start out. Um, each unit is kind of laid out the same way and that is when you get it um, in the mail, if you get the physical version, it comes shrink wrapped and all of the pages are separated. So what I do is I use page protectors and I put um, each of the pages in a page protector and it comes with a table of contents. It comes with vocabulary cards, as well as mini books that you have to cut and assemble on your own. I have not done that completely for this unit yet. It gives you all of the unit information, telling you that you need to do a science journal, a science wall, and then the lesson preparation and the experiments. And then it lays out, um, the supplies needed for each lesson so you can have that prepped ahead of time and then it has an optional read aloud um, books that are recommended for each unit as well and I like to get those from the library if I can so all of that is right at the very front um, you can prep everything before you get started so that it's pretty much open and go um, each lesson typically has an experiment which can be kind of difficult in my experience just because I have so many little children but sometimes it's difficult to do the experiments so if we're not able to perform an experiment for whatever reason we just talk about it and we'll look at the pictures of the experiment um, as it is done in each of the lessons so that is how we do it now I do I do prefer to actually get the experiments done but some days it just doesn't happen so um, there are pictures of what the experiments are supposed to look like and if for whatever reason we can't do it ourselves We'll talk it over and then you know there it is right there And then the kids will fill in their sheets and all of that stuff now as far as that goes each physical unit also comes with the um, The PDF version so you can print things yourself um, uh, my printer actually makes copies so what I will do is I will make copies of the vocabulary cards and any of the sheets that are supposed to go in their science journals that way I can keep the original all together in my binder and um, I just have copies that I use for the science wall and for the kids journals so that makes it easy peasy um, so yeah, I've already done a full review on the safety unit. Um, that was a really great unit. That's one that I will probably revisit again in the next few years with my younger children. But I had been looking for something to teach my kids those basic safety skills, fire safety, weather safety, and all of that. And that really helped um, 
it helped me put it all together and teach that to the kids. Um, the arthropod unit was so much fun. I think we did pretty much all of the experiments with that one. And um, I had a son who was in kindergarten at the time who just loved anything to do with bugs or insects. So he loved doing that unit. Um, I got all kinds of fun extra stuff to go with it just because my kids were so into it. So um, I have another video on everything I used as far as resources go for adding to that unit because it was just so much fun. Um, and then the intro to energy unit and the heat light and sound unit, that one wasn't quite as fun and we didn't do as many experiments, but I felt like my kids got a good grasp on learning about molecules and um, atoms and stuff like that. I mean, it was very basic, um, but I feel like they learned a lot, even if they weren't as interested in it as say the um, arthropod unit. Now the marine biology unit was one that I tried to do as a summer study. And um, I don't think I'm gonna do any more summer studies because the kids just wanna play and have fun. I tried to do it a little bit differently because in the past, um, I used the binders. So I thought, let me see if I can get it out here. I thought, let me just combine this unit myself. And this one was just the PDF. I didn't even get the physical version of this. I think I think this is free as a PDF, actually. Um, and what I decided to do was just combine it and not put it in a binder, which, um, you know, I don't know. I, I prefer the binder, and I went back to the binder, but... This is how I did this one. And um, this way I did not assemble the mini books. I just simply read them straight from my um, book here. And then of course with the vocabulary cards and any of the sheets that the kids needed for their science journal, I just, I made copies and gave it to them. Which that worked okay and everything. But there's a lot of times that they want you to cut things out and I don't know, I just feel like the binders are easier than um, doing all of this. But this one's also a pretty huge unit too. So, another mini book there. It does help though for the kids to, um, not have, or for the, it helps for your homeschool space and saving on your homeschool space. So this unit is a lot of fun. And like I said, we were trying to do it as a summer unit study. So it was really, really choppy and everything. But you know, here were the um, vocabulary cards. And this is something else that I decided to do a little bit differently. Instead of um, using a trifold board or poster board, like what I used for the arthropod unit. And I will have a link to um, the blog post I did and I took a picture of the poster board even though I explained that poster board is not nearly as durable as a trifold board. So my poster board is kind of a little bit torn up by the time I got around to taking the picture, but you could still see what I did. <laughs> um, what I did for this one was I wanted to just do a regular wall and I didn't want to actually tape the stuff to my wall. So I got, um, like a frame that had chicken wire on it and I put these on that um, chicken wire with paper clips. The only problem was my frame wasn't nearly big enough because there were so, so, so many vocabulary cards. And that's something else. Um, I have seen people make lap books on the Good and the Beautiful, um, community on Facebook. I think there's a separate uh, group just for the science. They make some really amazing lap books and um, I think that this marine biology one would be awesome as a lap book. There's just so many vocabulary cards that went along with this one. So we ran out of room and I had to take down um, 
the older vocabulary cards to make room for the new vocabulary cards. So that is how I did the marine biology unit. Now that we are working on the water in our world unit, I am back to using a trifold board. And I'll go ahead and show you guys. Dun, 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 dun. We're not very far into the unit quite yet, but um, I'm just putting up the vocabulary as we get to it. And then I'm also adding other bits and pieces like um, we learned about solid liquids and gases. So underneath I've got the different solid and liquid and gas cards. This is something that we did. And then I've got the information cards right there. I'll just continue adding to it as we go through it. So that is how we did that. Now, if you're wondering why am I using the Good and the Beautiful science units when we typically use My Father's World for most of our main subjects, um, like as far as like history and Bible goes, I do use the Good and the Beautiful for a lot of different things, math for my, you know, my younger student, and then um, language arts. I'm, I love their language arts programs. So the reason that I decided to use the Gun the Beautiful Science instead of what came with My Father's World is because I just love the way that the units are laid out. It's so, so easy. It's easy to um, plan and prep, and it's easy to implement. So that is why I decided to do that. And that doesn't mean that I'm not still pulling in other resources from My Father's World as well. Um, My Father's World is a very book-based curriculum. So I've gotten lots of great book suggestions. I try to match up what we would be learning in science with My Father's World with what I'm pulling in and having us do um, with The Good and the Beautiful. So <clears throat> this year we are studying creation to the Greeks and we're basically learning like the, um, the seven days of creation. Now I'm not doing any astronomy stuff this year and that is with My Father's World. There's a little bit about, you know, sun, moon, and stars. And I'm not really doing a lot with the animals this year or the plants because I'm going to do separate studies later on down the road. And my father's world does, again, like next year, we will be doing an entire astronomy unit. And I'll use the good and the beautiful. And then I'll pull in suggestions from my father's world. And then um, we'll also be doing the human body next year. So I'll be using books and stuff from my father's world and combining that with the unit from the good and the beautiful. And then... Another year, we will do more with the, um, the animals, the kingdoms and classification from the Good and Beautiful, and then their different animal and botany units that they have. So, um, we will be doing all of that. Now, <coughs> um, like I said, we were doing the light, or the energy, heat, light, and sound, which is, was also learned in My Father's World this year. And then the water, which is something else that was also learned in My Father's World this year. And the meteorology. I'm not sure that My Father's World is really covering meteorology, um, but my fifth grader requested that we do it. And I was like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be a lot of fun. So that's going to be our um, spring study. So we're excited to get to that. And then I also have the chemistry one, which is for older students. And my, um, my son, who will be in sixth grade next year, is going to be doing that as an independent study next year. So, if you have any questions about um, the Good and Beautiful Science Units, I will happily answer whatever I can. Um, just leave them down in the comments below. I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Um, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.